Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. It is literally a couple of days before Halloween when this video is being released, and I thought, why not make something else Halloween-related? But I, I wanted to address something really quick. While yes, Halloween is only a couple of days away, one of my favorite days of the year is the day after Halloween. As a prop maker, I'm constantly looking for materials that I can build stuff out of, and Halloween sales after do not disappoint usually. There are a lot of things that go on sale that you can pick up for dirt cheap and use them in props year round. So I just kind of wanted to throw this in as some ideas if you're out there shopping the day after Halloween. Um, Spirit Halloween has these awesome chromed out visors that you can see through. Evil Ted makes a pretty awesome space helmet using one of these exact things. Um, and they're definitely something that you could use for helmets and other stuff. As well as like random masks. Now this one isn't that great looking, but it does have an LED with a battery pack and a button that I could easily gut out and use in other projects. So anytime I can find electronics of any kind in cheap plastic, I, I definitely pick those up. Bones, um, I have a bag full of bones, a, a tote full of bones in my storage, uh, which could be kind of creepy to some, but some of them even have cool little LED flickering lights in them. These definitely will make for good bases to props and stuff later. Um, but I thought about what I wanted to build this week. And I, I, I have a lot of people say that they can't, ha they can't get access to a lot of the thicker foam that I use. And um, these yoga blocks they sell at dollar stores. They also sell them at Walmart and other places like that. Um, you can get them for pretty cheap at the dollar store close to my house. These are like four bucks and it's nice close cell foam that I can carve something cool out of. Um, I, I might have also picked up a bag full of tiny skulls. So I look around on the internet constantly and I get suggestions from a lot of different places. And one thing that I really saw recently that I thought was super cool, and I don't even know who necessarily came up with the idea or if it's just something that's been out for a while, um, is making snails with the shells of different items. And I saw one the other day made out of a skull and I just wanted to make it. So we're, we're gonna turn this and this into a skull snail, snail, snail skull, something cool. Let's get to making. I apologize for the voice. I'm not sick. It's just been a long week at school and I've strained my vocal cords a little bit. You can pick these cheap plastic skulls up all over the place. I think I got mine from Lowe's for a couple of bucks. The concept for this build is going to be pretty simple. Carve out the snail body and foam and use the skull as a shell with a couple of modifications. I draw out a side view of the snail and carve out the bulk of it with my box cutter. Be careful and work slow. I know it looks like quick work, but but my videos are usually sped up four to five times the normal speed. My approach to making this build is by no means the only way you could do this. I have lots of foam and plenty of experience using this material. It could certainly be done with clay, styrofoam, epoxy, hot glue, 3D printed, or a number of other methods. Play around with the processes and see what works best for you.
With the bulk out of the way, I can refine my shape a little further with my rotary tool and a sanding drum. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while sanding PVA foam. The particles will go everywhere and the last place you want them to be is in your lungs. It's also really hard to explain to others why you sneeze purple. After it's shaped, I switch over to a stone bit on my other Dremel and smooth over all the surfaces. The biggest scraps that I carved off earlier are going to be used to make the ocular and olfactory tentacles that protrude off of the snail's face. Same basic concept as before with the body, cut off the bulk first with a box cutter and some scissors, then refine it with the sanding drum and smooth it with the stone bit. Once they're shaped, I super glue them onto the head. I keep my reference image close by to make sure my snail atomical positions are correct. Snail atomic, sure that's a word. You'll notice I added a little chunk where the back meets the skull. This is to close the gap and make a more solid connection all the way around. I just carved out some more scrap foam and glued it to his back. With the respirator back on to keep me from breathing in fumes from burning foam, I began texturing the skin with my wood burner. I started with the foot, that's the bottom of the snail, and work my way around. I use a flat bit with the heat all the way up on my wood burner, make relatively slow passes, and watch the hot end wood burners can singe you pretty quickly.
Most snail shells have spirals that go out from the center called whorls. Part of their internal organs are housed in these structures and my skull has none of those. So my solution for this is to add hot glue to the top of it. I make a spiral to the middle on each side and go back over the ridges a couple of times to add a nice shell like texture and add interest. The foam gets two layers of Plasti Dip and the skull gets two coats of black spray paint. The paint job is fairly simple. I'm using some acrylic paint in shades of green and yellow for the snail body and brown for the snail shell slash skull. You can work from a lighter to darker or darker to lighter if you want, it doesn't really matter. The first layer is just to get coverage on. With each additional layer, I lighten my paint up with the brighter colors and then hit less and less on the surface. I'm not really trying to push the paint into the cracks because I know that I'm gonna end up hitting those crevices later with a wash. With both parts painted, I super glue them together with some Gorilla Super Glue, not a sponsor, and take him outside to give a clear coat before the finishing acrylic wash. This will prevent the paint from absorbing too much of the wash on the next step. I like to dirty up my props just to make them look a little more worn and it also helps to give some of those areas a little help standing out more. With a wet chip brush I loosely mix some brown and black acrylic paint and slather it all over the surface dabbing a paper towel over the high points and leaving it pulled in the cracks. It takes a pass or two before I can get the desired dirtiness that I want. It's kinda hard to believe looking at this that this was once a yoga block. finished here is the end result i think it turned out pretty awesome especially the fact that i may have spent three hours on it um in all fairness that's that's a pretty quick turnover time 
uh, but the snail shape is relatively simple. It's like an L with a weird head on the top. Uh, and then using that hot glue as the bridges on the snail skull um, kind of makes it super cool and there's a nice texture and with a nice little dry brush paint job there you can turn it into something pretty cool. Maybe you will try and make one of these out of some of your Halloween finds and epically decorate the rest of your house for things other than Halloween. For sure. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? And give them one of these. Tell them, much props. Um, I'm just going to set this guy right there, and uh, y'all can start a conversation or, I don't know, whatever snails do. Leave slime everywhere. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue seeing builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.